This unsolved mystery looks into how a boy was found dead in a chimney. On the 8th of May 2008, 18-year-old Joshua Maddox went on a walk and never came back. Josh was born in Colorado and was one of four children. His parents were divorced and so he lived with his father and two sisters. During his childhood, he spent the early years being homeschooled and then transitioned into attending a secondary school. Josh was six feet tall, had blonde hair and spent a lot of his time playing the guitar or writing music. He was liked by many and stayed out of trouble albeit having a very carefree attitude to life. His sister described him as the guy who would interrupt class president debates and declare himself a candidate, and the guy who once dressed up in a robe and snuck into the school choir's performance. On June 1st, 2006, his older brother, Zachary, who was also 18, sadly committed suicide. It was hard for the whole family and they suffered through it together. However, by 2008, Josh seemed to have dealt with his grief and was having a better time. On May 8th, Josh said he was going to take a walk and never returned. Soon, his family became worried and called all his friends. Finally, after five long days later, his father called the police to report him missing. Although it seems like a long time, the family was used to Josh going on these long walks, as he had previously mentioned that he would go away and not tell the family. So that's why they say it took the father five days to call the police. His sister Katie said, Josh was a free spirit and he always told us that he was going to have a great adventure and that he may not talk to us for a while. When he said a while, we thought maybe a few years. Many gathered round to form a search party where they searched the neighborhood, the parks and anywhere that he possibly could have gone for the walk. Although there was no evidence of his unhappiness in Colorado or any sign of rebelliousness, his sister believed he may have run away. She said, since Joss was 18, it was been reasonable to assume that he may decide to leave town to start a new life. As one of his two older sisters, I have always chosen to believe that this was the case. I have expected Josh to return home to my father's house at any time with a wife and small children, so that they can meet their grandparents and two aunts. Josh has always been known for his musical and literary talents, so maybe we would find him playing music with a band on tour, or catch him writing successful novels under a pen name so that he could keep his preferred lifestyle of solitude in the woods. The police disagreed with her and kept him listed as a missing person. I don't care about how much of a free spirit you might be. You don't wait five days to call the police and tell them you've got a missing child. I don't care how much of a free spirit you are. Seriously, like it is just, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't get that. And they say here, oh yeah, but you know, he's always walking around, we're expecting him to leave just out of the blue. No matter. If you are a parent, you almost have this responsibility that regardless of how free-spirited your child is, it's a duty of care. And I get that he's 18, you could argue from the age of 18 onwards, you know, that duty of care is a lot less. But you don't wait five days, especially if you have no idea. I don't know. It just seems so absurd to me that this was just, just this comes across so normal from the family. And I know that in these, in these circumstances, instantly people look at how the family react. And, you know, people would raise suspicions, even if it was like two days late, 48 hours later, never mind five days. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe life in Colorado. I understand that. I'm pretty sure Colorado has like, you know, a, a very hippie vibe out there. You know, people probably do go on long walks. Maybe they go and camp overnight. But you know, a heads up is probably the least that you'd expect. Hey, I'm going away for this long. Yeah, it just, everyone just seems a little too laid back for my liking. I hope you guys are enjoying this mysteries episode, but we're just gonna take a quick break to talk about our good friends over at ExpressVPN who have sponsored today's episode and allow us to, to keep bringing you guys and us these mystery apps. Now, if you guys don't know what ExpressVPN is, it's a VPN service, right? Now, believe this, right? Netflix have the nerve, the audacity to hide loads of shows from us just depending on what country you are from. So you can actually get around this. And by that, 
you use something called ExpressVPN and you can choose from over 90 countries to be from. So me being in the UK, I can actually select to be from the US and access the US library of Netflix. I'm not gonna lie, I've completely rinsed the entire UK library, right? So I need access to a whole new selection of TV shows, movies, and I can do that by using ExpressVPN. Not only that, but it does help protect you, it gives you a bit more security when you're doing online shopping, things like that. And all these things can come in really handy. Now, uh, you can go ahead and get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash mystery. Uh, that is E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash mystery, right? And that will get you an extra three months for free. Pretty dope. We love discounts. So check it out. Enjoy. In August 2015, an 80-year-old builder, Chuck Murphy, was demolishing his old cabin. The cabin used to be a party establishment between the 1930s and 1950s there used to be an illegal gambling and prostitution spot. Eventually, Chuck bought it in the 1950s and his brother had lived in there until 2005. It hadn't really been used in the last 10 years prior to 2015. It was old and damaged, so Chuck decided to demolish it and work on some property development. Workers came in to demolish the property and when they tried to reach the interior of the chimney, they found a body in a fetal position with its legs above his head. Chuck called the police and they quickly identified him as Josh Maddox. His family were in disbelief at how close to home he was the entire time. The Maddox house was only two blocks away and yet the searches were done everywhere else. It is quite sad when you actually think about how he, he might have died here. Like if this was an accident and he has just, he's gone through the chimney, maybe he thought, right, I'm just gonna, you know, try and get down this chimney just to see if I can go down a chimney. And, and he's being stuck there. And the fact that there were no homes around, so any cries for help, any, any, any of that just wouldn't have been heard. And I think that's a really disturbing part of this. And, and he wasn't that far away from people. Like there's not, there's not homes nearby, but he's also not far that far from his home. So while people were searching and looking all around the place, the fact that he was actually a lot closer to home than people thought is, is pretty heartbreaking. And I, I know at least the family probably feel pretty horrible about the situation. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, look, you, you don't check chimneys, do you? The autopsy, which came back, showed that there didn't seem to be anything in his system, nor any foul play. The hard tissue showed no signs of trauma. There was no broken bones, no knife marks. There were no bullet holes. And there is so far no answers to a number of things. It is very confusing. It was not an instant death. How he died is only a matter of speculation but we know he did not starve to death because that takes many weeks. So then you go down the chain and you have dehydration, which can take just a few days. And another thing that could happen would be hypothermia, which could just take a day or two. We have no evidence to say which one came first. By September 2018, the county coroner ruled it as an accidental death. He believed Josh had climbed into the chimney on purpose and by accident got stuck in the chimney. The nature of his fetal position may indicate that he was trying to get access to the chimney. However, many of the locals, including the Maddox family, had problems with the coroner's report. They claimed that this chimney was being built and had mesh fitted on top which aimed to keep animals and rubbish from falling into the cabin. The coroner claimed that maybe the mesh had corroded and claimed that they hadn't found any metal or mesh when searching through the cabin and there was no evidence in the photos either. Chuck Murphy explained that when they decided to demolish the cabin, their first step was to rid of all heavy wire, including the mesh, which is something the police didn't even ask about. Another point of doubt in the inquiry was that there was a large wooden breakfast bar which had been torn off the cabin's wall and blocked the chimney from the inside. This led the locals to ask if the bar had been torn and taken off, who had done it and why? Another point which made many locals wonder was that Josh's clothes were found folded up by the fireplace. He was found only wearing a thin thermal shirt. The coroner finally admitted, this one really taxed our brains. We found his clothing just outside the firebox. He had only a thermal t-shirt on. We don't know why he took his clothes off, took his shoes and socks off, and why he went outside, climbed on the roof, and then went down the chimney. 
it is not linear thinking. So three days after his conclusion, the coroner reopened the case. It's a little bit annoying that the coroner was just, it, there was just no help here. Like there was really, there was really nothing. They're saying it could have been an accident. It could, you know, and I get that there definitely are times where there really just is nothing. You, they're never going to find out. And it just is, a, I guess you say a cold case, but it has to be frustrating that the police the forensic there was there was just nothing there the only thing that we do know is that he came down or he tried to get down the chimney even then the whole thing about the mesh on top of the chimney is like that should have been there so is someone taking it off did he take it off chuck it away and then it got taken away when they were demolishing the house um what happened there i don't really know i i i want there to be a bit more of like a reasoning or, or like you know, can we at least prove that this was accidental? Uh, but there's just nothing to go off. And, that, and that, that is always really annoying here. And maybe if there is nothing to go off, then we just have to accept that this was an accidental case. And we're just looking way too far into this. But the stuff about how there was, um, his clothes had been taken off, put inside the house, the, the breakfast bar had been like torn off. There's just a lot of things there that make you think, why would he be in the house and then come I like it, it sounds like you would go through the chimney to break into it but he's done he's not done that he, he's already in the house and as he looked at the chimney and just gone i wonder if i can get down that let me try i'm bored i mean it's very possible that like 18 you're still doing stupid shit uh but it is just a little bit weird that that's all there seems to be one main theory several people had bragged about killing josh and tried to take the credit this was a post on Reddit by Genta Mangina. He posted this seven years ago. I went to high school with this skinny, dorky hippie named Andy who played guitar in a band. I was never good friends with him or anything, but a year or so after I graduated, one of my good friends, Josh, started hanging out with him and then went missing. Last I heard, Andy was telling another friend, yeah, me and Josh have been spending a lot of time together. We're planning a trip to New Mexico. I didn't really think anything of it until somebody showed me these articles. Turns out, in addition to becoming a lot scarier looking, Andy had indeed headed down to New Mexico, where he found himself shooting the shit with the caretaker of a disabled guy and got invited over to their apartment. Caretaker gets in the shower and when he comes back out, the disabled guy is stabbed to death and Andy's gone. When Andy got arrested, he also claimed to have killed a woman in Taos and stuffed her body in a barrel. The cops had indeed found a woman stuffed in a barrel in Taos, but already had somebody in custody for it and decided to stick with that guy instead. Years later, I found out that the caretaker had died in a bar fight and without him, the cops didn't have much in the way of evidence. Somehow, that case against Andy was dropped. Several of us went to the cops saying, yo, Josh who went missing was last seen with Andy who's a murderer. Maybe you should check that out. Despite a fair amount of pestering, nothing ever really came of it. And by nothing, I mean that the police mostly didn't even return our calls and once accidentally canceled the bulletin on Josh because he's alive and well and living in the next town over. He was actually in the chimney of an abandoned cabin like two blocks from his parents' house. The coroner said the body had been there for about seven years and ruled the death accidental, concluding that Josh had probably climbed down the chimney in an attempt to break into the house and gotten stuck, which, given the age of the corpse, doesn't seem overtly ridiculous. Except for the fact that in addition to Josh having been seen with Andy immediately before his stabbing spree, people called in to report having heard rumors that Andy was bragging about putting Josh in a hole. And the fact the owner of the cabin says it would have been impossible to access the chimney from above because he'd installed a heavy steel grate under the top layer of bricks to keep out raccoons and whatnot. The coroner said he never saw the grate, so maybe it rustled away. The owner pointed out that this was because they only found Josh's body while in the process of demolishing the cabin and that the grate had been hauled off to the junkyard with other scrap metal. Or the fact that somebody had ripped a heavy bar off the wall in the kitchen and propped it against the fireplace. 
or also the fact that Josh's stuff was already inside the cabin, meaning A, he'd already broken in and would have to lock himself out to have to go via the chimney, and B, he might have noticed that either the flu or the big bar would have prevented him from getting in through the fireplace. Or the fact when he was found, Josh's knees were above his head, which sounds to me like he would have had to have gone in head first. Disclaimer, not an expert at fucking all. Or maybe the fact that Josh was barefoot and naked from the waist down. This is just my opinion, but I don't care who you are, you don't try to climb head first into a chimney via a hole rustled through a metal grate with your dick hanging out. But the most ridiculous part for me is this quote from the coroner. I know it's not a natural death, but I'm confident it's not suicide, he said. My other options are an accidental death, homicide, and an undetermined cause of death. It is frustrating, we can't pin it down. So your options are accidental, homicide, and undetermined, but you just can't seem to pin it down. You're telling me it's almost as though you are unable to determine the cause of death. Well, in that case, everybody knows that accidental is the only way to go. Look, I get it. They didn't find enough evidence to arrest Andy or anyone else, but these motherfuckers went ahead and demolished the cabin despite all this. Josh's body was cremated. As far as I can tell, nobody even bothered to call Andy to ask if he knew anything. By the way, from what I hear, Andy's still out and about doing his thing when he's not in the mental hospital. It's not that I want somebody to blame. I'm not trying to throw a tantrum because give me answers. All I'm saying is I wish they had done some police shit. Open investigation, try to track down some leads, interview some of the folks who have been calling in tips for the last seven years, maybe check for some semen or something. I don't know. Don't just say accidental. Dust off your hands and call it a day. Anywho, sorry for the rant guys, had a little whiskey, felt like I had to vent, but yeah, that shit frustrates me. So you can see this Redditor was not happy at all, and that really is the only theory, and it's kind of gone through, he sort of just says, I guess probably what we were all thinking here really, which is about how, how the police just felt like they didn't really give this case a proper go, or really look into it. It could have been that because it was a f quite a few years later, they just thought, you know, like, kind of what's the point, I suppose. It is a very strange case. Uh, it's interesting talking about this Andy person. And yeah, maybe he, they should have looked into him. But again, there really just is no evidence that looks at Andy. I mean, I, I know he's com uh, comparing it to something that had happened previously. But again, nothing came of that either. So it is very much just, just pure speculation. I suppose you could say maybe they should at least speak to Andy. But I mean, what, what, what can they really do here? There, there's just, there's no evidence anywhere, which is an absolute shame. And for me, with that, you do have to just sort of r rule it as an accidental, an accidental death, um, an accidental suicide. I'm, I'm not too sure, but it is, it's obviously a really sad story and I'd love for there to be more stuff. Let me know if you got, if you guys have anything that you think that maybe I'm missing here, particularly in this in this Reddit post here, because he just seems, he seems absolutely set that it just can't have been accidental and there has to be more to it. But he did also say he's had a little bit of whiskey. So maybe he's just fired up and really just wants an answer. I know he says he's, he's not bothered about that, but I, I, you can often, especially if you're, you're even somewhat close to a case at all, you often want there to be a reason or an answer. And the accidental death is, is probably the one that gives you the least of that, which, um, yeah, it, it is sad. But we're going to leave it there, guys. I'd love to know what you guys think about this case because this is so fascinating to me. And it's also just an absolute shame that we don't have more info. So let me know. What do you think happened here about the chimney? Was this really just an accident? Let me know. If you are new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Of course, you can hit the five stars on Spotify. If you didn't know, this is also on Spotify as uh, audio, so you can just listen to it on your way in or whatever. But until next time, I will see you guys in a bit. Laters.